Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, so now we are going to discuss about the kingdom of Animalia. Okay, before we start, uh, so these are the list of uh, animals based on phylums in the kingdom of Animalia. Alright, okay, so it started from the phylum Porifera. Next, phylum Nideria, Platyhelminthes. Nematoda, Mollusca, Anelida, Arthropoda, Echinodermata, and Chordata. So I would like to remind you to make sure that you have to uh, make sure the first alphabet of the phylum must be capitalized. And please uh, take note on the spelling of the phylum. Okay, right. So this um, classification of animal kingdom is based on their complexity, right? So which Phylum Porifera is the simplest uh, animals and it will be becoming more complex, more complex as it goes to the uh, phylum of Chordata. Okay, right. So this is the hierarchy of classification uh, of any animals. Okay, right. Just to recap a little bit about the possible phylogeny of Kingdom of Animalia, you can see that started from Porifera. Remember, animals are basically uh, divided. Uh, or classified based on the presence of tissue. So scientists will look at uh, or discover uh, or yeah explore their tissue. So animals that do not have true tissue but at just at the cellular level is porifera. Okay, and the other animal meaning to say from Nidaria up until Chordata they have tissue. But what kind of tissue is it? Two layers of tissue or three layers of tissue? Right, uh, so that is uh, will be further discussed uh, and then further uh, explored by the scientists. Right, so next we can see from the tissue itself, right, animal that have true tissue with two layers of tissue or diploblastic is only nidaria. Right, so remember only nidaria that have two layer of tissue or diploblastic, whereas the other uh, phylums uh, of animal composed of three layers of tissue, starting from platyhelminthes until chordata. Okay, right. And then scientists also looking at the body symmetrical uh, presence of cavity and so on. So this is what we are going to discuss. Okay. Yeah? Alright, so now let's start with the first phylum, phylum uh, porifera. Okay. So, animals in this phylum are informally called as sponges. Like I said, the SpongeBob SquarePants is actually an animal deep down in the ocean. Uh, but the shape is not whatever, uh, yeah, similar like what you have watched or seen uh, in the uh, cartoon. Okay, right. Sponges are sessile. Sessile here means they are fixed in one place, which is they are unable to move. And they are lacking of tissue, right? Because they are just composed of uh, specialized cells. Okay? They live as filter feeder by meaning that they are trapping particles that pass through their internal channel of their body. Okay, I'll show you this one later. Okay. So porifera have coanocytes, okay, which is a collar cell uh, which have flagellated cell that used to ingest bacteria and tiny food particles. So example of animal in the this phylum Porifera is sponges. Okay, so you can see from here, this is uh, the picture or the shape of uh, sponges. Remember, porifera or sponges do not have definite shape and thus they do not have um, symmetry. Okay, definite symmetry. So you, uh, they are living as filter feeder. You can see that so water will flow okay, through the uh, pores, right? and filtered by the uh, cell that we have here, which is the coa coanocyte. So the coanocyte have a cola cell, right, that have flagellated cell over here that used to trap particle um, that, uh, yeah, uh, reach to the coanocyte. Okay, right. Okay, next we go to the phylum Nidaria, the second phylum. So, Nidaria have tissue, through tissue. So, how many layers of tissue? Two, diploblastic, meaning they have 
uh, meso uh, sorry they have ectoderm layer and also uh, endoderm layer so what about the middle layer so the middle layer is composed or it it is lined with jelly substances with few cells that call as mesoglia okay so you can see from this picture that the yellow color is basically showing you the mesoglia Okay, so you can see uh, the middle layer over here. Uh, you can see the mesoglia, right? Uh, that, uh, yeah, the middle layer composed of jelly substance with few cells called mesoglia. Okay, right. So, uh, the nidaria are having radial symmetry. So, meaning you can have more than one planes to cut them into half. And they have a gastrovascular cavity, ronga pencernaan with single opening so you can see here this is mouth and also anus right and these are the tentacles okay right so the the, the single opening serve both as mouth and anus kat situ tempat masuk makanan kat situ dekat tempat keluar and they have a unique uh, stinging structure that called as nematocytes that found in a specialized cell called as nidocyte so nematocyte can be found here at the tentacles okay i will show you afterwards right and it is very useful for capturing prey and help them to feed okay example of a nidarian are jellyfish sea anemone and also hydra okay so you can see from here uh, the structure of tentacle so this is the mouth and also the anus right so uh, at the tentacle you can have the structure that we call as the nematocytes right where it is found in cell called as nidocyte which will discharge thread that helps to capture the prey okay right so that is nidaria okay next we go to the third phylum uh, platyhelminthes so platyhelminthes are triploblastic so remember starting from the phylum platyhelminthes onward from platyhelminthes onward all of the animal are having three layers of tissue right meaning that they have ectoderm mesoderm and also endoderm right so the difference is that maybe some of them have no body cavity some having yeah hemocele or some have um coelom okay which we we'll, we will discuss further okay right so platyhelminthes has three layers of tissue triploblastic right uh, ectoderm, ectoderm, mesoderm, and also endoderm. And platyhelminthes have bilateral symmetry. Okay, so they have no body cavity, which we call as compact. So they are so flattened. The structure are dorso ventrally flattened. Okay, sangat sangat. Uh, uh, what we call it? Pipih ataupun sangat nipis. Eh? Nipis, uh, that's why we call it as dorsoventrally flattened. Okay, they do not have body cavity, uh, which we call as compact or no specialized organ for circulation. And they have a gastrovascular cavity or uh, no, uh, with no digestive tract. Okay, dia ada rongga pencernaan tapi tak ada satu uh, specific uh, digestive tract. Okay, alright. Example of platyhelminthes are flatworm, planaria, flatworm-like planaria. Okay, flatworm means cacing pipih, right? Uh, like planaria species, uh, blood fluke, and also tapeworm. Atau bahasa Melayu kita panggil cacing pita. Alright, so this is example of the flatworm. Okay. Right, this is planaria. You can see that planaria, platyhelminthes, is showing the simplest cephalization where you can see the presence of ganglia uh, you have the ventral nerve cord meaning to say they have showing uh, concentration ataupun showing uh, uh, what call it a concentration of nerve tissue okay right and here is the gastrovascular cavity right uh, and this is the pharynx right Okay, and this is a uh, blood fluke, right? Uh, so the blood fluke is basically can infect human intestine, right? It can pre uh, reproduce sexually in human hosts, 
and uh, producing uh, the fertilized egg then exit in the host feces, which later on will develop into larva. So the larva later on will uh, infect another host, which is snail. So inside the snail, they will undergo a sexual reproduction that produce another type of motile larva. So this motile larva then can penetrate to the skin uh, uh, wounded, right? Ataupun uh, any open uh, wound of human and the cycle will continue. Okay, so this is blood fluke, right? And this is tapeworm. So the tapeworm ataupun cacing pita, they have uh, proglottis with reproductive structures and they have a hook and sucker so that they can uh, adhere or attach to the intest intestine. Okay, next is phylum nematoda, or we call them as nematodes. Okay, the phylum is known as nematoda. The animals or the organism in this phylum we call as nematodes, right? Uh, or the round worm, cacing gelang. Okay, nematodes are enormously abundant and diverse in the soil and in aquatic habitats. And most of them are parasites for plants and also animals. They have tough cuticle that coats their body. And of course, they have three layers of tissue. Remember, right? Starting from platy helminthus onward, all the animals having three layers of tissue that we call as triploblastic. Right. So if platy helminthus are having no body cavity, or we call as compact, right? Uh, nematodes have hemocele. So remember, hemocele uh, is a kind of body cavity. They have body cavity, but the body cavity is located between mesodem and endodem layer and uh, the hemocele usually fill with fluids that help them to produce uh, um, to support the skeleton okay next it has cylindrical body with tapered ends so bentuk badan dia uh, satu hujung a little bit cylindrical and the other end will be a little bit tapered and have no circulatory system Right, uh, no specific circulatory system. Example of nematodes are uh, or is uh, Ascaris. So Ascaris is kind of round worm that infect pigs and human. So you can see here nematodes have uh, showing a complete digestive tract where they have mouth and also anus. Right, uh, so it become more advanced lah in terms of the development of digestive system. And you can see that they also have a reproductive system, right? Ovary, a reproductive pore, right? And this is the hemocele that is look well, the blue color that is located between uh, mesoderm and also endoderm layer. And of course, you can see there is nerve ring, meaning they are showing uh, cephalization or the development of nervous system. Okay, next we go to uh, phylum mollusca right so mollusca have a soft body uh, that in many species it is protected by hard shell okay they also uh, have three layers of tissue ectoderm mesoderm endoderm and they are having hemocele hemocele with reduced coelom what does it mean by hemocele with reduced coelom meaning that Reduced coelom here meaning the fluid or the blood fall, uh, sorry, the fluid or the blood are flowing in the coelom, right? Meaning that dekat cavity tu pun ada uh, fluid that flows within it, okay? Right, they have three main body parts, muscular food, right? Here, that is used for locomotion, muscular food, okay? Next is visceral mass, so this is visceral mass. The visceral mass basically contain organs like involving a digestive organ, excretory organ or reproductive organ, visceral mass and mental. So this is mental. So mental help to produce the heart shell okay, by secreting calcium carbonate. So most molars have heart shell that is made of calcium carbonate, right? And example of mollusk uh, are... Ataupun the example of animal in the phylum of mollusca are snail, clams, squid, and also octopus. Okay, this is another example. Chitin, right? Uh, ancient uh, mollusca. Okay, 
and this is uh, land snail, right? The sea slug, okay? So sea slug, you can see they have lost their shell due during the evolution. Okay? Okay, and this is the land snail. You can see they have mouth, right? And also anus, complete digestive system, right? So these are all the organs that are found or enclosed within the visceral mass, okay? And this is the um, muscular food. Alright, uh, so, uh, okay, and that's also octopus. Alright, so finish with mollusca. Next, we go to phylum, annelida. So, the animals or the organism are called as annelids. Alright, of course, they have three layers of tissue, right? And uh, they are also called as segmented worm, right? And earthworm are the most familiar annelids. But most annelids live in marine or freshwater habitat. Okay, annelids have coelom, meaning the body wall and uh, the internal organ are segmented. So coelom here, remember, the body cavity is located within the mesoderm layer. Okay, right, within the mesoderm layer. So the body wall and the internal organ are segmented. So that's why they are uh, classified or they are having presence of segmentation. Okay, right. So except for digestive tract, which is unsegmented. Right. Example of animal in phylum Annelida are earthworm, leech, leeches, marine segmented worm. Okay, so you can see from here, this is uh, Annelida or the example here is uh, earthworm. You can see here, this is the septum. So, septum is the partition between each segment. That's why they are called as a segmented worm. They have presence of segmentation. Where one segment will be separated by another segment. Right? So, if you can see, there is, at this segment, there is metanephridium. So, metanephridium involved in the excretory, uh, excretory system, part of the excretory system. Right? Uh, so, this next segment also do have metanephridium, but except for uh, the digestive system that is uh, continuous, okay, and not segmented. And you can see that they have complete digestive system with mouth and also anus. Okay, so this is marine segmented worm, and this is leech, okay. Okay, next we go to phylum Arthropoda. So Arthropoda, remember, they, uh, they are also have uh, triploblastic, bilateral symmetry uh, animals, okay, and they have hemocyl with reduced, reduced coelom. Remember what is reduced coelom means? Uh, blood somehow flows within the coelom. So Arthropoda also uh, have segmented body, right, where they have a uh, head region, Okay, they have a thorax region. Okay, sorry for my, uh, because I'm not using the, another laptop. Eh? Okay, and they have also abdomen region. Okay, right. Uh, so that's why they are also called as segmented. Okay, they have jointed appendages. Uh, appendages that is having joints like legs, wing, uh, okay, mouth part, antenna and whatnot. So those are jointed appendages. And they, are, they have exoskeleton that made of protein and also chitin, right? An example of animal in phylum Arthropoda are horseshoe crab. Okay, ataupun kita panggil belangkas. Okay, spider, scorpion, uh, millipede, okay, uh, millipede, centipede, ulat gonggok, uh, lepas tu apa lagi, uh, lipan kan, okay, insects, crabs, lobster and also shrimps. Uh, so, these are all in the phylum Arthropoda. 
Okay, uh, so this is what we call as the segmentation. We have the they have head region, thorax region, and also abdomen region. Okay, and here you can see, uh, in, uh, despite having the segmentation, you can also see all the appendages like the swimming appendages, the walking appendages, the feeding appendages, right? Uh, sensory appendages and also defense. Okay. Right, and this is horseshoe crab. Okay, next we go to the phylum Echinodermata. So echinoderms, of course, uh, they are three layer having three layers of tissue, three problastic, right? And bilateral symmetry in larva stage, right? But not in adult stage. Meaning to say, they have different body uh, structure in larva shape and also in adult. Okay, so in larva, they have bilateral symmetry, but in adult, usually they have a radial symmetry. Okay, uh, for example, that we can see in the sea star. Okay, right. So they are able to move. They are moving, even slow mover, and feed by using a network of internal canal to pump water into the different parts of their body, which they have a unique water vascular system. Okay, I'll show you later. And of course, they have a coelom, right? Uh, remember what the coelom means, okay? And uh, they have bilateral symmetry in lava stage and five body parts organization as adult stage. And they have endoskeleton. The example are sea star and also sea urchin. So this is what I meant by the five uh, parts organization of their body. Right, where you can see that they have medriporite, water can flow in on out uh, the water vascular system into the surrounding water through the medriporite. Okay, uh, so this is the medriporite. So where it is like a channel where water can flow in and out uh, from the water vascular system. So they have five parts of body uh, organization where you can see this part composed of the digestive glands. This part uh, is involving the uh, reproductive uh, 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 parts and so on. Okay, right. Okay, this is the sea star and the sea urchin. Okay, atau bahasa Melayu kita panggil landak laut. Okay, and the last phylum in animal kingdom is the phylum of chordata. So, uh, chordates. Right, uh, so uh, animals in this phylum we call as chordates. Chordates are bilateral uh, animal, or meaning they have bilateral symmetry, and of course three layers of tissue: mesoderm, ectoderm, endoderm. And uh, chordates, right, must have the following characteristics. Right, these five characteristics: notochord, dorsal hollow nerve cord, pharyngeal gill slits, block of muscle and post anal tail okay All right so let's see one by one okay so this is the notochord this is the notochord okay so up here is the dorsal hollow nerve cord all right and they must have block of muscle okay and pharyngeal gill slits and post anal tail Okay, right. So, now let's go and look at the notochord. Okay, notochord. All chordates and bryos, all chordates and bryos have a notochord. A stiff but flexible rod that provide internal support. So, the notochord remains throughout the life history of most invertebrate chordates. Okay, for your information, chordates are divided basically into two. One is invertebrate chordates and the second one is vertebrate chordates. Okay, right. So for invertebrate chordates like here, ni, tunicates and uh, tunicate and also lancelet. Okay, so notochord remains through the life history of most invertebrate chordates like what you can see here in lancelet, right, and also the tunicates and present only in the embryos of vertebrate chordates. Alright, like uh, other animals, 
uh, involving uh, mammals, for example. So, the notochord present during embryonic development only. Okay. Right. Second one. Dorsal hollow nerve cord. So, dorsal hollow nerve cord is a fluid tube, fluid filled tube of nerve tissue that runs to the length of the animal. Dorsal to the notochord. So, dorsal here means duduk di atas kepada notochord. Uh, so, that's why you can see the picture just now. Right? So, this is notochord. Right? This is notochord. And the yellow color over here is the dorsal hollow nerve cord. It is located dorsal to the noto, notochord. Okay? Alright. So, it present in the chordates throughout the embryonic and adult life. So, it will be present throughout the uh, embryonic or even the adult uh, cycle stage of the uh, chordates. Okay, so what will happen to the dorsal hollow nerve cord? The dorsal hollow nerve cord later on will develop into brain and spinal cord. Okay. Next, pharyngeal gill slits. So pharyngeal gill slits are a pair of opening through the pharynx. In vertebrate chordate, use them for filtering food like this. Okay, this is lancelet. So you can see that this pharyngeal gill slit, lancelet, basically buried themselves in the deep down in the ocean. Okay, right? And you can see that this pharyngeal gill slit help them to filter food. Juvenile fish use them, use the pharyngeal gill slit for breathing. Adult fish, the gill slit will develop into the true gills. Where in reptile, bird and mammal, the gill slit will be vestiges. The gill slit will be vestiges. Vestiges means they are can heal up and it only occur in embryo. Okay, so next is block of muscle or we call it as myotome. So a block of muscle surround the notochord and nerve cord, right? Uh, so yeah, basically muscle. We know that the muscle help to um, for locomotion, for uh, what we call it. Um, and many other functions, okay? So, so the, the uh, myotome or block of muscle uh, is surrounding the notochord and nerve and nerve cord like this, okay? So, this is the block of muscle surrounding the notochord and also the um, block of, uh, sorry, notochord and also nerve cord here, okay? And post anal tail, so the notochord, nerve cord and the myotome extend towards the tail. And it found at some time during the chordates development. Okay, uh, so this is the post anal tail. Okay, it is extended from the notochord, dorsal hollow nerve cord. Okay, right. What are example of uh, chordates? So you can see that, remember, uh, they are invertebrate chordates like lancelet. Right, so this is lancelet. And uh, this is also invertebrate chordates, example, tunicates. Okay, you can see that they have all the five uh, characteristic of chordates, like tail, okay, uh, block of muscle, okay, notochord, dorsal hollow nerve cord, okay, pharyngeal gill slits, right? So all the five characteristic are here present in the tunicates, invertebrate chordates, and also we have vertebrate chordates. Example, lamprey, okay. Uh, so you can see here they have the gill, okay. Uh, and the other five characteristics. Alright. Okay, that's all uh, related to Kingdom of Ani Animalia. Thank you very much.